Hello again, it is finally time for a new painting video, and today I have this Eevee card from Ultra Prism. This card was number 105 out of 156 in the English set, and in the Japanese set it was number 83 out of 114. This Eevee card is actually the second Eevee in the Ultra Prism set, the first being number 104, and that card actually just has different artwork and a different attack on it. The Eevee card I am working on today, however, was illustrated by Hideki Ishikawa, and was one of three cards in this set to be illustrated by him. The other two are actually both trainer cards. Both of these trainer cards were gym leader cards, one of them being Cynthia and the other one being Volkner. Now this Eevee card was actually reprinted for the 2018 movie The Power of Us as a promotional card. It had different artwork and actually featured a clip of the movie and an Eevee in the trainer from that movie. And that's really about all the information I can give for this particular EV card. I've actually worked on this card a few times in the past, but this will be the first time I get to actually record it and show it to you guys. My favorite part about the artwork of this card is just how many EVs there are in it. You don't often get to see cards with a lot of different Pokemon represented in the artwork, so seeing this guy playing with two other EV on a card that has Palette of Friends as an attack is just a really cute idea. I just really like this card. So my thought process with where I was going with the artwork on this card was that I wanted you to be able to see underwater. That's, that's a very typical thing that I include in my cards. I like doing underwater scenes. But this one in particular, I really wanted to pull the idea that this is kind of a murky, swampy puddle, lake. I'm not sure what kind of water this is, but it, it looks muddy and it looks dirty and it looks like it's in the forest. So I wanted to include lots of stones and pebbles and a stump was in my, in my in the back of my brain. And I wanted to include another tree, maybe even two, in the foreground just to better frame the action that's going on in this card and to bring some more of those background elements to the foreground. So as with all the cards that I work on, I typically start in the background when I, when I begin filling in colors. I really enjoy the color palette that this card has, especially with the foliage in the background. Just these light greens and yellows is just a really soothing mix of colors for me, and I, I really enjoy working on this card every time. But anyways, yeah, I just I just begin filling in the colors from what I can see, and I, I just continue these trees off of the original artwork. Which, these background trees are a little bit interesting, because I, I typically like to include the, the tops of the trees, like the leaves on the tops, but they, they look like they were really tall. Uh, skinny trees, so I ended up just painting in the the background leaves and bushes and not really Showing where the tops of the trees end up There is a ton of brown in this card. I am NOT the best at mixing browns They always tend to dry a lot lighter than how they end up afterwards And once you gloss the card and everything kind of darkens up it's really just hard to tell with brown what color you're going to actually end up with at the end. So a lot of times you're going to see the colors I'm mixing might look like they're slightly off tone. But I promise after I after I gloss it and finish it and shade everything in it, it'll look right. I did want to talk a little bit about how I create leaves and bushes and trees. A lot of the time I use this technique called dry brushing. And it's where instead of loading your paintbrush with a lot of wet paint and, and water or whatever you use to blend, I'll just I'll, I'll dab the bristles down onto something dry like a paper towel just to get them spread out. And then I'll very lightly coat the ends of the bristles with whatever color I wish to use. And then I'll continue to dab that color into the card. And it actually really easily creates lots of leaves and various little details that would be really hard to to create if you were trying to focus and make each one of those by hand. My painting style for leaves is, is really messy and it'll look really unfinished up until it is finished because that's just the style that I use when I work with paint. But you will see that I'll, I'll continuously be blending in these colors to make them look more acceptable and more comparable to the original artwork. But my general style is to just get the color onto the card, and then deal with the details at the end. So the brown in this lake or puddle or whatever 
is such a weird color of brown. I, I ended up realizing that it had a lot of orange in it. I was I was leaning to yellow. I could tell it had some really warm undertones, but I, I just kept trying to use yellow and it just never, you can kind of see, it, it never really looked correct. But once I got some red in there and really drove that orange into it, it, it started actually looking a bit more correct. But it just goes to show no matter how much how much practice you have with mixing colors, you can still get a little off sometimes. Another suggestion I could give you is if you can't quite get the right color, just go back over the original artwork everywhere that has the color that you can't quite match and just paint over it with what you do have. That way it'll it'll look like it's always been that way <laughs> and you can kind of get away with using the wrong color but it'll, it'll still make sense when you look at the whole artwork as a completed piece. Ripples in water are always such a struggle for me. In, in my brain I can picture exactly what I want, but actually painting it and getting the water to look like it's natural is, is kind of hard for me to do. I always end up having to sketch off to the side what I, what I want the water, like how I want it to be moving, and usually that helps me a lot with envisioning it. But if you're struggling with, with waves or ripples, I do recommend, as always, looking up pictures online to kind of help you learn how water moves and flows around things. I'm, I'm still definitely not a professional <laughs> at, at water ripples and water effects, but it does help me a lot to look up artwork like that. For the tree and the stump in the foreground, I really wanted them to stand out in contrast to the really green background, so what I ended up doing is using the complementary color of green, which is red, and mixing that in with my browns to create a more reddish colored bark. This just really helps separate them from the background. I didn't want them to blend in too much. I, I wanted them to feel like they were a lot closer to you than the other trees. So this helps just to make them pop and make them look a little more bold. I really love painting stumps. I don't know what's created this obsession with me painting stumps lately, but I, I try to put them into every card that I can right now. <laughs> They're just so fun to paint. And this is how I paint moss onto trees and rocks. I actually start with a solid white uh, layer of paint. That just helps to really separate it from the, the bark or whatever it's resting on. And then I'll come back with my yellows and my greens. And that usually helps make it look like it's sitting on the bark or on the rocks or whatever, instead of just being painted there. If you give a little bit of shadow to the edge of your moss, it'll, it'll really help sell the idea that it's actually growing there and not just flat on the surface. I'm not very used to painting underwater scenes where the water isn't blue, so trying to figure out what color the water would be underneath was a little tricky for me. I ended up just using the same brown that I painted the surface of the water with and mixing it with some blue and a little bit of green just to contrast the orangish tones and I think it worked out. I think it sold it pretty well. <laughs> Funny enough, I tried to look up pictures online of underwater swamp scenes and swamps are just so murky that you normally can't get a good picture of what's going on beneath the surface so I just kind of winged it with this one. You really don't have to include a lot of detail with underwater scenes, as long as you set up the, the basic shading and some pretty solid lighting. You, you don't have to get into all the nitty gritty because it's, it's supposed to be kind of murky anyways. So my strokes with, with underwater scenery are, are really broad and just kind of imply where light would fall and where shadow would fall. I don't necessarily go and paint out every single individual stone, I just try to lay out where stones would be or where this stump would grow. And that about wraps it up for this card. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again. I'm sorry it has been so long since the last commentated video <laughs> that I've done, but I do appreciate you watching and I appreciate you coming back to see more. Hopefully I'll have another video within the next two weeks. There will definitely be another one next month, hopefully two like we did last time, but we'll see how it goes. But thank you guys again. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, definitely check out my Instagram. The link will be down below. And if you are so inclined to check out my Patreon, I would really appreciate that as well. But thank you so much, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.